Hello and welcome to TAD Summit Asia. I'm going to be presenting today on the CX tech landscape across Asia. Now, we are in quite a unique situation at the moment. We've reached an equitable situation across the global telecom revenues. If we look across Americas, which is the blue, uh, EMEA, which is the gray, and orange, APAC, we have achieved roughly 33% uh, percent split. Now, this is across fixed telephony broadband and mobile voice messaging and broadband. Now, of course, North America is a little bit higher, but that's because of poor regulation means poor North American consumers massively overpay for their telecom services. But this is the first time we've uh, reached this. So it's an interesting point I thought I'd make. Now, there are lots and lots of CX tech companies across Asia. There's lots of global champions. Now I'm just showing some of the uh, players here. Some are, well, I mean, yes, it's listed in London, but it's an Indian company, are uh, sort of global champions in, for example, business messaging. We've got lots of interesting sort of uh, like CPaaS players like Toku, Holio, uh, WebRTC, or uh, sort of uh, video collaboration companies like uh, Temesis, and many, many more. So, you know, it, I just wanted to highlight that there are lots of innovative companies out there in Asia, because uh, uh, I'm going to be sharing some uh, very specific numbers based on some analysis. Now, the analysis that we've done, you know, it's a bottom-up build looking across all the companies in the CEX tech space, and I'll share what that space is in a couple of slides. And if you see anything that's missing, let me know. This is a rapidly evolving landscape as companies appear, disappear, get bought. So uh, as you review this, I'm sure you'll see, uh, you know, it, it's a little out of date. As soon as I publish, it's out of date. This is an attempt to map out the companies across CX tech, which of course is communication platform as a service, Contact Center as a service, Unified Communication as a service, and all the not as a service versions of those platforms, business messaging, in-app communication enablers, enterprise messaging, collaboration, and all the automation tech that exists in making all these technologies work better. Uh, now, you will see, and I've got the URL here, back at the end of last year, I published the Excel tables. I'm working on them at the moment. Uh, I'll explain what work's been done on them in the data that I'm going to share with you in this presentation. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of background and just to say, yeah, it, it's, it's gonna be out of date. Now here's the landscape. So at the bottom, we have all the open source projects and all the communication enabling software and platforms. Sat on that are in-app communications, that's embedding you know, voice messaging, video collaboration into your apps or your web pages, all the uh, CPAS companies. Uh, now, I, I highlight that it's public because there are some private CPAS companies as well, but the bulk of the revenue here is public CPAS. Then there's business messaging, which is all the ATP SMS stuff, but of course that's expanded into WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, uh, and uh, many other messaging platforms. Here's the automation technology that I mentioned. So this speech rec bots workforce management, conversational interfaces, and they're really the two main pieces of this domain, which are employee communications, phone systems, and customer communications, contact centers. And what you must never forget is enterprise channels. So that is those that take all these technologies, package them all up and deliver them to their customers around the world. Now, of course, many, many more are delivering direct. So it's not you know, purely through all the revenues are going through channel, but it still does take a significant uh, piece of the revenue around enterprise communications. And the ones in green are the ones I'm going to focus on in this presentation. I'm putting together all the others as well, especially in the channel, but uh, you know, I was just showing where the focus is for this presentation. So what's new in this update? Well, I've added another 200 plus companies. This is a bottom-up analysis. So it's not putting a finger in the air and estimating what the overall market's going to be. This is all about identifying the companies in this space, es estimating their revenues and how those revenues break down. And that enables us to do some pretty fine grain slicing and dicing of the information, particularly geographically. And that's what I'm going to be presenting in uh, this deck today. So 
I've expanded the list of global VoIP providers and CX temp companies. I've also expanded the list of master agents and distributors. So that's the channel piece. That's mainly North America. Um, international is a work in progress at the moment. I've added in channel and telco contributions to the revenues. They were missing it in the last data I showed. And I've updated the projections to include a global recession in the second half of this year into the first half of next. Now, most of the collaboration providers are you know, not impacted. You know, there's a slight acceleration for some. Uh, call centers initially not impacted, but there will be a downturn into uh, 2021. Use-based businesses will be impacted almost immediately. So uh, for example, CPAS providers, most of their revenue is usage-based, not subscription. So they get impacted in the second half of 2020. Now, I will update this data as results get announced. I'm just trying to uh, you know, preempt what we're likely to see in the coming years. And I've also added in regionalization of the revenues. That is not only where the company is headquartered, so that's where all the revenue goes back to, but also how their revenues break down geographically across their regions of operation. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of background on what's different to the uh, presentations that I gave last year. So now let's look at some pretty landscapes, some logos. So here we've got all the open source projects. We're going to go into lots more detail through TED Summit Asia on these uh, projects. I've added a couple more in. So we have Dratio, we have RTP Engine in here. And then these are companies that are more, well, that are commercial. So these are open source projects, non-commercial generally. And then you've got here, like Wazo, that's the commercial arm of uh, the Wazo platform, which is the open source project. You have 2600 Hertz, which is the commercial arm of uh, Kazoo, which is an open source project. And then you've got other projects, uh, sorry, companies that uh, are purely commercial. And they may be based on some of these open, project, open source projects, some not. So that's just to give you a breakdown of how the sort of enabling software works. Uh, but I'm not looking at the revenues on these. I just wanted to show that this is what most of the CX tech landscape is built upon, these projects here. And I have the name of the project, who is the guardian, the custodian for these projects, and a brief description uh, from my perspective on what all these projects are about. Now, I don't expect you to read this. I'm just showing that for later viewing, because uh, on the web log, it's not just this presentation, you've got the slides there as well, so that you can go through the uh, material and refer to it. So now let's look at CPAS. So now we can start looking at some interesting splits between what's happening in the Americas versus EMEA versus Asia. And there's lots of companies. I am showing here some of the consolidation that's happened. So WaveCell, based out of Singapore, they got bought last year by 8x8. Eight eight. Uh, Flowroute got bought by West. And as you can see, it's complex. It's not just Twilio or Vonage in this space. There's lots of different companies that are providing not just voice APIs, but SMS and a whole host of other APIs besides, uh, or, and services. So, I mean, API is just a way of delivering a service. So you're going to show you just the complexity of the revenue mix for the companies that I've listed here. And what I have is a big Excel, as you would imagine, with lots of companies' names, what the 2018 revenues were, if they published, or my guesstimate if they weren't, and then what I think the growth is going to be. And you can see here, I've been backing off growth figures uh, from what uh, I was anticipating because of the uh, likely uh, global recession that we're going to uh, hit. And I'm breaking down across core APIs, that's the API aggregation, but also SIP trunking, uh, business messaging, 2FA, IoT, contact center as a service, and UCAS uh, as a service. Now, when I say, you know, contact center and as a service, you, unified communications as a service, it can be on-prem as well. So uh, I just use that as a sort of category name. It's contact center in all the flavors that it could be deployed. Same with uh, UCAS and all the flavors that it can be deployed. And I know that these revenues are, especially the growth figures are very conservative now compared to a lot of the business plans of the companies listed, but I'm just, you know, Reality is hard, and I think that we do need to, uh, in our planning for uh, this year and into next, 
you know, make some relevant uh, predictions. I mean, I know, for example, in the travel industry, they're predicting by the end of this year, uh, 2020, their revenues might be at one third of what they were last year. Just so you understand that there's some industries that have been massively impacted and all I'm doing is rolling back some of the growth figures. So we're pretty lightly impacted. So let's have a look at some of the numbers. So this is showing the uh, CPAS market sizing. So this is the total curve. It's backed off a bit from what I was showing last year. Uh, I mean, this, these figures are the same, but it's just uh, the growth has been backed off slightly and it shows the mix. Uh, for all the different contributors. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I consider CPaaS, Communication Platform as a Service, a bit of a you know, misnomer. I mean, it's programmable telecoms across all its instances. Twilio does SIP trunking, it does authentication, it does uh, unified communication through its ecosystem. It's got, of course, its core APIs, <coughs> it has IoT, business messaging, and contact center with Flex. And it's not the only one that has some offer in the contact center space. So it's important that we recognize all these revenue contributions coming together in the CPaaS space. Now, what I've done here is had a look at, and my face is in the road here, so let me move it down here. Uh, so this is looking at the CPaaS revenues by region of the company. So it's where they're headquartered. So we've got the uh, blue line here is the total. And then here is for the Americas. So as you would anticipate, you know, there's a lot of North American companies in this space and they're hogging the bulk of the uh, revenues. Now, of course, North America is a big piece of the overall CPAS revenues, but there is quite a lot of revenue that's being earned in EMEA and in uh, Asia that's going back to US-based companies. And that's what I'm showing in the next slide uh, where I break them down by where the revenues are earned. So as you can see, North America uh, is still the majority, but you can see here, uh, both for EMEA and APAC, that uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's reasonable revenues. I mean, the market's growing, uh, you know, because there's clear value there. You know, there's money to be saved by using uh, CPAS. So there's a gap, as I show here. Here's the, what the US uh, CPAS companies are earning, and this is what uh, you know, the actual revenues from North America are. And then here's Asia, what, you know, basically Asian CPAS companies are earning. And here's the revenue. So there's a gap here, you know, of, uh, you know, over a billion dollars that's basically going from Asia to North American companies. So why are we seeing that gap? Oh, talent is everywhere. So that's not an excuse. I run TAD, Hack, Global, talent is everywhere. Also, CPAS isn't really interesting to VCs. I mean, they invested in it a decade ago. And you know that those investments have played their you know sort of uh, run, and they've exited out. So it's not you can't blame it on conservative Asian VCs anymore that there isn't uh, solutions here. Also, open source has commoditized CPaaS, uh, Wazo, Dratio, both projects that you know have open source CPaaS platforms. I mean, we're going to hear from uh, the uh, founder of Dratio uh, at TAD Summit Asia this month. So technology barrier isn't you know, an excuse, although the adoption of open source telecom software in Asia is followed than in other regions. But again, Tatsuma Asia wants to address that. For me, I think one of the keys is the perception in Asia that I don't see as strongly in Western markets is that telcos still own telecoms. When I was putting Tatsuma Asia together last year, that surprised me in, as I was promoting it, uh, getting people on board, everybody thought it was a telco event. And I'm like, but it's programmable telecoms. It's open to anybody in communications. If you're an enterprise comes, if you're an enterprise, this is relevant you know, information, insight for you to make important decisions. So that again, as you're sharing, I think we have a perception issue here. But again, through Ted Summit Asia, we're gonna help address this gap. Now on business messaging, more of a uh, sort of positive story here. Lots of different players across here. Generally it's A to P. So it's, you know, uh, uh, SMS marketing. This is an old slide. Uh, I haven't updated it with the impact of the recession, but again, just showing you have the companies, the guesstimates on the revenues, how it breaks down, brief descriptions, number of employees, 
And this is including uh, impact of the recession. So the numbers are lower than I was showing last time. And this is just pure business messaging focused companies. And then this is including all the CPaaS providers that do business messaging as well. So that's the sort of total business messaging revenues. And then breaking it down by region, a to P SMS has been around for a decade or more. So as you'd imagine, it's you know, a pretty sort of you know, fair breakdown across the uh, uh, sort of markets. So there isn't sort of a bias there. So you know, Asia isn't losing out when we're looking at business messaging. Now let's move on to employee communications. So we've got here, let me just move my face down a little bit. So we've got employee communications, we've got all the phone systems, business telephony, unified communications, and then we have all the messaging enterprise, messaging platforms and collaboration. I want to be focusing on this side. Okay, for the time being, I'm not going to be including the revenues that happen here. This tends to be a winner takes all decision. While you can have multiple collaboration, multiple messaging platforms in an enterprise. Same thing. We have all the names of the companies, uh, estimates, and then the sort of growth through. Again, this is last year's figures. Uh, it's just that the Excel is a bit of a mess at the moment, so I'm not sort of cutting and pasting it out as there's still some work to do there. But the numbers I'm showing are based on my estimates around uh, the uh, coming uh, downturn. And here's the total market. So one thing that's a big difference is it's closer to the sort of other overall market uh, predictions we see. You can see this flattening through 2000, 2001. And what I've done with this uh, is, again, because it's a bottom-up build, we can split it many different ways, not just geographically, but by the size of the companies. So these are the big legacy providers. And then these are all the small, innovative VoIP providers that have been entering the market using open source. 80% of them are based on open source telecom software. Average age, about six and a half years old. And this is an amazing situation. We've got this segment of the market growing from five to 10 billion dollars, all thanks to open source telecom software. And you know, the bias is towards cloud hosted. I sort of you know, group that together. You know, so there's on-prem, so that's on-premise. And then cloud hosted, most businesses don't care whether it's hosted or the cloud, as long as it works and it's, they're not having to manage the servers, it's great. So again, this is a very interesting uh, figure. And as we can see, there's significant growth that's happening even through the downturn, thanks to basically their innovation, and of course, their low prices. Now, let's have a look at how those revenues break down in terms of uh, you know, where they're earned. Well, enterprise communications is mature. So it's not like you know, it's, you know, it's starting in North America and it's rolling out. All businesses need enterprise phone systems. But as you can see here, when we look across the regional distribution of those smaller players, uh, again, there's a bias to North. America. Uh, so that again, you know, sort of Asia is, you know, a good source of revenues. You can see here, it's uh, most probably a sort of 11, uh, 12 billion. But in terms of what's being earned by the smaller companies in this space, it's a fraction. So again, Asia is missing out. Uh, again, I link it to, there's a number of factors. Regulation is also in there, but I don't want to go there. That's one of those sort of you know, problems that's too many layers to peel. Let's focus on where we can have an impact and help uh, entrepreneurs in Asia in the next uh, you know, uh, year. You know, again, it's this perception that you know, it's telecoms, it's a telco, it's not anymore. Telecoms is for any provider out there. It's on the web. So, Given those gaps, both in enterprise communications, where revenue is earned, but then where it's going back to in terms of the owning company, across both CPaaS and enterprise VoIP, what should we do? Uh, and that's part of what we're trying to address here with uh, TED Summit Asia. So we want to encourage the rise of open source telecom software across Asia. So I'll be giving a open source telecom software landscape presentation next week. We have sessions from Asterix, Free PBX, Kama Elio, OpenSip, Stratio from the leaders of those projects. So you can get to know them as well as their projects and hopefully adopt them because it enables you to save so much and stand on the shoulders of giants in deploying telecom services. We have a really interesting session with several presentations. We have one from Sebastian Schumann from Deutsche Telekom on an evolutionary outlook uh, of the role of IT in telecoms. 
and then in improving the experience of realizing CX Tech use cases by the founder of uh, Automat Berlin. Then, after those two presentations, we have a panel discussion which will include several entrepreneurs from Asia. Uh, Mark White, Craig Richards, Dinesh, who have been working across this space for many years. I think will provide some great insights and contributions to the discussion around a universal telecom API to help address the fragmentation that we see in the Asian market but also to help you know basically create a rising tide to help lots of players take advantage of being in the asian market and delivering solutions to asian businesses so looking forward to that session we also have lots of programmable communication interviews interviews from across asia as well as we have an interview with david curran from dublin on the importance of hackathons we're bringing insights from all around the world but squarely looking at uh, in our agenda for ted summit asia how we can help entrepreneurs be successful in the cx tech space so that's hopefully given you an overview of the cx tech landscape some quantification and if you have any questions, just go to the TAD Summit weblog. Here's the link. Uh, that will be reviewing the content I've just presented with the slides, with my video, uh, and how to contact me. So you can have a discussion there uh, on the uh, weblog in the comment section, or you can contact me directly. So again, thanks so much for your uh, time. And uh, I hope you find over the coming month, TAD Summit Asia, value.